People of Ascension Parish, we are so happy to have you joining us from the comforts of wherever you are. The live and virtual Musical event ended. is an extension of our continued efforts in bringing transparency and access to our local government. Let me tell you a little bit about the format of the meeting this evening. Parish President Clint Quinmall will give a brief presentation and participants will be able to call in to submit questions that I will read aloud. And then the Paris president will directly answer those questions during this live event. You can press star three on your phone at any time during the event to submit your question as our team is standing by ready to talk to you and take your questions. We will also have two interactive questions that involve audience participation. So let's kick things off and hand it over to your parish president, Clint Quitmall. Welcome, and thank you for attending. I'm Parish President Clint Quitmall, and I'm excited to try a new platform for our Ascension listening tour by holding this event virtually. Tonight, I have some key staff members with me, CAO John Diaz, CFO Patrick Goldsmith, DPW East Director Ron Savoy, DPW West Director Supervisor Regina Thomas, Director of Planning and Facilities Ricky Compton, Director of Recreation Michael King, and of course Director of our Community Outreach Raven Jackson. The real competitive advantage in any organization can be summed up in two words, smart people. I've made it my point to surround myself with smart people. If you have a problem, get them in a room and get to work. So I'm going to do a brief presentation and then we'll go ahead and get started um, with your questions tonight. So I kind of want to do a little brief overview of um, not only what the parish has achieved but also some of, um, some of our problems and issues that we're currently solving. So at first I want to give up an IDA update. Um, it was one of the worst uh, storms in a while that we've had here in Ascension Parish. Uh, we've all had to struggle with our uh, electricity and um, our debris, trees down. We had 410,000 cubic yards of Hurricane Ida debris has been removed from Ascension Parish roads. And over 144,000 cubic yards of Hurricane Ida debris has been removed from state roads. Now roadways are done and we'll shift our focus to our waterways. Um, one of our great accomplishments uh, of the first two years is bringing transparency to our residents uh, in our open checkbook, which we refer to as open finance. As most of you are aware, a big part of the reason I ran for office was to bring more transparency to parish government, because transparency is the first step in building trust with our residents. I can't tell you how excited I am that this administration took upon the open finance idea, and with the help of our council, from concept to reality. We have merged four years and over 2,000 pages of PDFs into a comprehensive user-friendly dashboard. In addition to building trust, more government transparency leads to better informed residents as well as more government accountability. We've also undertaken early childhood education. This is one of those ideas that when we first started out in January, of 2020, we had the discussion of where do we start thinking out the box? Yes, we're responsible for roads, responsible for drainage, responsible for recreation, but what are we doing to change the lives of the people in Ascension Parish? And so we all know that our children are our future and the time to invest in them is now. We have a joint effort uh, of the Ascension Parish government the sheriff's office, school board, and the public library system to do just that. The new educational center should be open in 2022, and it will be paid for through the Juvenile Justice Program Fund. On to recreation. This past year, we hired two new leaders to our recreation team, Michael King and Dirk Decato. Between both of them, we're working to improve the field conditions at all locations, acquire grant funding for new projects, and work with local organizations such as Leadership Ascension to help elevate our recreational abilities here in Ascension Parish. The department will also receive additional funding from the sale of the sewer assets to help with our money to go even further in bringing state-of-the-art uh, options to the parish. Now we had a couple other, a 
accomplishments recently. And what you see in the photo is um, our new dog park. We currently, uh, with leader, uh, Leadership Ascension, um, we're able to cut the ribbon at the Prairie Dog Park in Prairieville. And prior to this project, we helped fund Ascension Leadership Group with their Field of Dreams, the All Abilities Field in the city of Gonzales. It just won an award. It is this type of partnership that brings our community together and allows us to achieve more. And we, we look with partner with Leadership Ascension more in the future and bring some great projects to Ascension Parish. So let's uh, take a look at infrastructure or transportation. So we got good news and bad news. Um, it's a pretty staggering number. Ascension Parish is $1.25 billion, and that's a, that's a big B, behind on our transportation needs. The good news is we have a plan, and through that we'll probably never catch up, but we're making up ground. So far this year, we have leveraged $32.5 million to help with our small $8 to $10 million transportation budget to spread for, uh, further. Um, quite a list of projects they're working on, but just a little added note, we're just weeks away from completing the Henry Road roundabout at Highway 30 and the clearing and grubbing for Roddy Road, US 61, and LA 35, which gets that area close to construction for safety widening. We're also working closely with our legislators to work on additional interchange at I-10 for our parish to keep up with our traffic concerns. So bringing transparency again, this is something that we're able to go ahead and showcase uh, some of the work that goes on around the parish on a weekly basis. So we'll be doing weekly updates to better inform all of you on what we're doing, where we were, where we're going. Uh, we had a break due to Hurricane Ida uh, and having to go ahead and clean up all those trees and get back to zero, but we're back on track and we'll be starting again this Friday with our vegetation and drainage updates. So in the drainage big picture, um, we have several uh, projects that we have listed on the screen here. Um, and it's, it's a quote that our drainage department on the west and the east side uh, referred to. And, and, and the statement is, is, our waterways are like our highways. We can't accumulate capacity unless we have plans to grow capacity. And um, just like our highways, we've got to keep them clean. We've got to keep them maintained in order to move water, uh, just like we move traffic. Um, but we do have some big items um, that are coming to fruition to start construction on in the next coming months. Um, those three projects would be the Fish and Frog Bayou Locks over in the Dutchtown area, and that's over at Spanish Lake and um, Bluff Swamp. We have the Laurel Ridge Levee in Galvez and Santa Mon. Uh We should start uh, some type of construction in January. And finally, our new river dredging project in the city of Gonzales. Um, this will be part two of the dredging project since we've already completed uh, our crews have from the gate valves all the way to uh, Bayou Goudin. And so this will continue from Bayou Goudin all the way to the weir behind Walmart. And we should be starting that project um, hopefully in early parts of December. So excited about those big three projects, which are monumental projects and been going on for years. And to be able to start construction is uh, certainly um, a great monumental uh, improvement, as, and uh, we have the drainage board as well as the administration and staff. Kudos for bringing all that together and uh, getting those projects started. So we also want to look at how we take a regional approach to things. And drainage is no different when we take a look at our waterways how they affect our parish boundaries and go beyond those boundaries. Um, it's critically important that we work with our neighboring parishes to ensure that we're all working on uh, our regional projects. This slide here, if you take a look at every census block on both sides of the Bayou Main Shack and on both sides of the Amy River, this region in green would represent 0.7% of the state's land mass. Yet, since 1990, and has represented 20% of the entire state's population growth. You can't add that many homes this close to our major waterways and not have, not impact drainage. 
And so it's critical that we work with our neighboring parishes uh, like we have when we worked with EBR um, and with contracts helping to clean Manshack, um, working on um, the Spanish Lake Basin and um, Bayou Manshack with Iberville, uh, working with St. James in, a, in the southern part and, and meeting with parish presidents and leaders there, uh, as well as Livingston. Um, we have a great project that has been funded on Highway 22, and that's, that came out of our work with Livingston Parish. So super excited about these projects, super excited about looking at drainage, not from a parish standpoint, but also from a regional standpoint. And that's important as we move forward, looking at how we handle storms and, and different weather events in the future. So also, we have to look internally as well. So our population has increased by 18%. And once again, that's a lot. Too much, too fast. We saw the major growth in the northern parts of our parish, and mostly on the western part and on the northern part, working with Ken and Keast to do a full review of our plans, codes, and ordinances to achieve the goals of making sure they're all in agreement and close the loopholes and determine how we can make changes to ensure better growth for existing residents and new residents coming into the parish. So we all know that we had record number of rain this year and we're no longer getting 10 year storms. We're getting 25, we're getting 50 and, and even more than that. And our current code cannot handle those rain events. And so we must adapt to the weather pattern that is changing, and that requires us to, to take a look at our codes and how we uh, to intend to grow, not, not only for tomorrow, but for the next 10, the next 20 or next 30 years. And, and that's what we're trying to achieve during this moratorium period, is to take a look at that and start to question how we've done things, how we've planned, is infrastructure keeping up with growth? And I think we all know that answer. So what can we do now so that we can grow better moving forward in more of a responsible way, not only for our residents that live here, but also for the residents that are moving here. And so this is a very, this is a very important time as well as a very important opportunity. Um, and so uh, we gotta open up each box, take a look at, at what we're doing and how we may need to do it different. So I'm excited about that. Uh, took, a, took a trip, a field trip today with Kendi Keese, representatives today, and um, different staff and, and, and other organizations will be doing the same um, all week on their visit here. Just taking a look at situations in the field, in the parish, so that we can understand uh, our previous regulations and the cause and effect of those regulations. So this is a, a pretty shocking map. This is one we had at, at uh, the majority of our open uh, listening tour meetings where, where residents came. So when you take a look at the Old Mill area and Plantation Creek area, that's south of 74, east of 73, north of Cornerview, and west of I-10. In 1998, there were only 15 homes in this 589-acre area. Today, the same area now has 740 homes. So when you look at that, and you look at those low-lying areas and those pastures and those fields, and how much water that, that can take until it hits those drainage structures. In 1998, that was 77,000 gallons of water during a one-inch rain became ran, uh, runoff. Today, 1.6 million gallons so from 77,000 gallons to 1.6 million gallons of water runoff during a one-inch rain event. This is why we have to take an aggressive approach to planning. And not, not only on traffic. I mean, when you look at that photo, how many traffic improvements have been made in that area for this amount of growth? How many major drainage improvements have been made? not enough and so this is a very important slide to know what we need to do moving forward for the next 20 years and how we need to take a look at our, our codes and ordinances 
So now it's time to listen to our residents and ask questions and, and get answers to those questions. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our residents. All right, thank you so much, Parish President. One thing we are focused on in, is improving our understanding of what our residents think about where they live. We have two poll questions to help us understand how you feel. I will first read the poll question aloud and review the possible answers. Then I will repeat the question so you can select your desired answer. To start, in your opinion, what is the most important problem facing the Parish of Ascension today? The six possible answers are traffic congestion, drainage, overdevelopment or population, growth, poor road conditions, lack of recreation and cultural events, or other. Again, in your opinion, what is the most important problem facing the Parish of Ascension today? Now I will reread it and you can select your answer by pressing the corresponding number on your phone or keyboard. In your opinion, what is the most important problem facing the Parish of Ascension today? Press 1 to select traffic congestion. Press 2 to select drainage. Press 3 to select overdevelopment and population. Press 4 to select growth. Press 5 to select poor road conditions. Press 6 to select lack of recreation and cultural events. Press 7 to select other. We'll give you a moment to get your desired answers in and we will revisit what the most popular answer is in just a bit. Right now we are going to kick off our Ascension Listens event questions with our first online submission, Anora. Parish President Honora is asking, how do we stop the aerial spraying for mosquitoes? It kills everything but the mosquitoes, and I do not want poison sprayed on my land. We need to protect our green infrastructure, especially our forests, farms, trees, and natural green spaces that are accessible to the public in all parts of the parish. What are your ideas and plans to preserve our green space throughout the parish? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. The aerial spraying only occurs after major storms when we see an explosion in mosquito populations. And what we do is we have the ability for residents to kind of call in and take their property out of the sprays, spraying lines. And then so if they have livestock or they have anything like that that they or just don't want to have their property sprayed, we're able to, to take them out. We do receive a lot of calls from people who want the spraying. And so we're trying to find a good balance there on the people who want it and the people who don't. So we're, we're continuing to work. This is probably the first time um, since when we, when we spray during Ida that we have the option for people to, um, to call in and have their properties excluded from the spray. So we're looking to go ahead and have more options like that in the future. And, and of course, take a look and, and have EPA and DEQ always review what's being sprayed and the normal procedures that we have done in the past and how we move forward in the future. So it's a great question. And as far as green space, um, we're trying to solve that issue too as well because we ask that a lot in Ascension Parish. So we see large tracts of lands throughout, throughout Ascension. How much money do we carve out of our transportation, our drainage, our recreation budget, or our money that we have stored away for storms and recovery in order to buy property. There's really not a lot because really if there's any available money with our small transportation budget, we like to spend it on roads. And so, you know, there are several ideas that have been floated around about, um, you know, carving out a part of the budget or looking at um, additional revenue to buy green space. And instead of subdivision, Visions, taking a track of land and making it a park. So we're still kicking those ideas around and it's important for us to get residents input on how we all think that we should achieve this. I don't want to force anything on anyone, especially anything to do with taxes. Um, I'm a conservative at, at heart, so I like to make sure that we're spending our money wisely and we're getting the biggest bang for our buck. But if we're looking 
to get aggressive with those type of things and acquiring property and securing it for large parks. And I'm not talking about small things. I'm talking about large recreational areas. Then that's going to require some type of funding. And so we're looking for our residents to provide some solutions there. What do they think and how to achieve that goal of, of having more green space secured for our future? And so uh, we don't have the answer to that right away. And I, I'm, I don't hesitate to admit that because that's a very tough question on where that revenue is going to come from. And so that's, that's something that I would like to talk to the public about and get their input so that, that I can be their representative in whatever path they choose they want to go into securing more green space. Great, thank you, Anora. We have another question from Carl and Libby from Darrow. When will Brown Road and Walter Reed Road be blacktopped? So our current system is done by a rating system. And so um, what we go is we go and we rate the roads on where that money needs to be allocated for our overpay. I'm not sure about those two roads specifically. Um, we have, of course, thousands upon thousands of roads in Ascension. So I, I can't answer to those two. I know that we have a rating system, um, but we'll certainly take in a look at those and see how they rate and see where they are. And maybe we can reach out uh, to the, to the uh, citizen and let them know where they may be on the list of uh, overlays. All right, thank you so much, Carl and Libby from Darrow. We have another question coming in from Daniel from Dutchtown. Can you explain what can be found on the open checkbook? How is this supposed to be used by our residents? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to pass this on to our CFO, but I, I do want to state that this was, um, this was a tremendous achievement for this administration. And um, I spent a lot of time in making sure that this was user-friendly and had the um, data that brought transparency to parish government. It's one thing to think and want an idea and it's, a next, it's another thing to bring things to reality. And I can't be more proud of my staff uh, for doing just that. So I want to pass that question on uh, to Patrick. All right, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, you know, we've heard the word transparency a lot tonight. And uh, I want to thank you for pushing us to get this done, because this is not just transparency, this is accountability. And in terms of finances for the parish, we want the residents to be able to see in real time where the money is coming from, where the money is being spent. So what this project did and what Open Finance does is it takes the 300-page budget book and it puts it online and it puts it at the fingertips of the residents. And it's real-time data. The data is updated every week. And so, like today, I went on and looked at the revenue for sales tax, and I was able to see that so far we've collected 103% of what we budgeted. So that's a good thing. We're a little bit ahead of the game with those revenues. But it's updated in real time, so I could see that as of today. Um, and what this does is it provides the revenues. It provides how much we're spending. Uh, it provides the information in tables. You can look at graphs. You can look at timelines. And it lets you see how much is budgeted for individual departments. So you can see, for example, recreation. If you want to see how much money they're bringing in, how much they're spending, and where it's going, you can drill down. So it's, it's a great system. You go to the parish website. There's actually a, a link right there for open finance. Uh, or you can go to the finance page under departments, and there's a link there as well. And so you, you can go there. You can click on revenues or expenditures, and then you can start drilling down. And as you drill down, you see more and more detail. Uh, again, you can see the graphs. You can see charts. Uh, you can see information by funds. You can see revenue by type. Uh, so if you're interested in mental health, uh, there's actually a feature on the home screen where you, it's a search feature. You type in mental health, their budget pops right up. Uh, so we wanted to make this as user-friendly as possible. Uh, because we want the residents to use this. And we, we even put on there, please provide feedback to us uh, on our Facebook account or any way possible. We've got phone numbers because we want them to be involved uh, in the process. So right now you can see the revenues and expenditures. Uh, that's phase one. Phase two is going to be seeing payments to vendors. Uh, that's coming hopefully in the next few months. You'll be able to drill down to payments by individual vendors, see how much they're paid in a year, 
uh, and see what they're being paid for. Uh, phase three will be payroll data. Uh, so hopefully a few months after that, we'll be able to roll out the payroll data. You'll be able to drill down by department, uh, see how many staff, uh, how much they're paid, you know, the type of positions that we have. And, and again, it's just uh, another way for, the, for, for transparency in the parish. Uh, just a few other quick things uh, that kind of go along with that, with the transparency. If you look in the budget, and actually the budget hopefully we, will be adopted this Thursday at council, you'll see that for the first time we're doing multi-year budgeting. So you'll actually be able to see for capital projects what's planned for the next five years. Uh, you can see Move Ascension like you mentioned. You can see recreation projects. You can see it broken down by all those types. And, and what we're hoping to move to in the, in the next few years is actually have the entire budget multi-year budgeting. That's kind of the trend that's going on. And we need to plan for the future. And we need to start thinking out uh, five years where we want to go and, and where we want to be. Uh, something else that's, that's also helped our budgeting process is we've been getting our department heads much more involved, uh, wanting them to be the owners of their budgets so they're driving and really helping us make sure the money is going where it needs to go. We want to make sure the money is spent efficiently. We want to make sure it's spent effectively. And those department heads are the best ones uh, to do that. So this year we actually had them do online budget submissions. Uh, to start the budget process. So we've got a lot of things going on uh, in budgeting and finance world that are helping us build towards that transparency, uh, more towards the efficiency, the effectiveness, the open finance, the multi-year budgeting, and also using those electronic systems to try to, to, to help us get a better handle on exactly where we need to spend those, those precious dollars that the parish has. Patrick Goldsmith for your answer to that question. We are going to give you guys the answer to our first polling question. Now that first question was, in your opinion, what is the most important problem facing the parish of Ascension today? Based on those who are online, 30% say traffic congestion, 24% say drainage, 27% say overdevelopment and population growth, zero poor roads and conditions, 12% lack of recreation and cultural events, 6% say other, and 1% of you guys were undecided. Parish President, do you have any responses for the residents and their response to that question? I think, you know, if you ever attend any planning commission meetings, <laughs> that, that, that uh, fits pretty accurately. Um, you know, I think that it's obviously traffic and drainage that is the number one and two. Um, issue in our parish as we have grown over the last 20 uh, or over 25 years um, and that growth can I think that to understand that growth continues it, it contributes to both so as we continue to grow and um, how we've grown has contributed to both drainage and transportation issues and, and I think that's where we are in looking at our ordinances and code is how do we help both those areas in adjusting our code and adjusting our ordinances for where we go in the future? Obviously, any elected official would love to have a time machine and go back and fix or go back and plan differently uh, with the anticipation of growing so fast, but um, that doesn't exist. And so we have to take steps now um, with the weather pattern changing, uh, there is no better time than now. Um, and so I think that's, that would fit accurately. I think that is, is dead on to what has been consistently the two top issues uh, in Ascension Parish for the last two decades. All right, thank you guys so much for participating in the poll. We're going to go and continue with our questions from online. Jerry is asking, is there a way to know when the pumps are on? Yeah, if you go to USGS, you can look at the, uh, those gauges of each of the pumping stations, and uh, they're about a 15-minute delay. Um, but you can actually look at when those pumps are turned on. We try to make a post as uh, often as we can um, just to let people know that the boatway will be closed and we'll start pumping down. Um, but yes, um, you can go to USGS, put in those gauges, They'll show the location of those gauges at those pumping stations, and you can monitor when those pump stations are turned on. OK, 
Okay, thank you so much, Jerry, for submitting that question. So Patricia from the city of Donaldsonville is asking that she's hearing that there is going to be new things coming and she just wants to know about um, how Donaldsonville is developing as a city as a whole. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we got a lot of stuff going on at Donaldsonville. Our early childhood education probably is the biggest item that uh, hopefully will start to change the future of the West Bank in Donaldsonville. Um, giving kids a head start in school and um, making sure they have the proper nutrition, making sure there are daycare services. Um, I think that's huge. Uh, I think that is um, changing society in, in a major way. Um, and so in addition to that is how do we spur economic growth? And we do that by uh, looking at grants, um, looking at uh, cultural grants, things that we can jumpstart and uh, move forward with creating jobs over on the West Bank. And, um, uh, you know, I think you, you look at what's happening downtown on, in Donaldsonville. There are some great things happening. We got to take advantage of that. We can't miss that opportunity. We got to add to it. And so, yeah, stay tuned. There's some exciting things that are going to be announced in the future for the West Bank. Right. Thank you so much, Patricia, for that question. Our next question is from the residents of San Martin Road. They want to know that blighted properties have been a concern since the Great Flood of 2016. What is the plan for blighted properties in unauthorized dumps? Yeah, I'm going to uh, pass this on to uh, Ricky Compton so he can talk about what uh, code and ordinances changes we've been making in that area of blighted property. Thank you, uh, Parish President. So recently the council adopted a new set of ordinances that will enable our building department as well as code enforcement to better handle and address blighted properties. I do not believe it is the elected bodies um, desire to go out and just start knocking houses down and removing people's uh, property uh, because they believe that that property has value. But we do have a lot of properties around the parish that uh, are affecting property values. They do bring down the quality of life of the residents in those communities. And these new ordinances that we've passed are part of the um, International Building Code and they are a standard that is accepted uh, across the country and we're looking to increase our ability to enforce those rules and regulations. So, you know, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Dealing with blighted properties and condemning structures does take a long time, but we are moving in a positive direction. All right, thank you so much. Sally from Prairieville is asking that she is excited to see the first dog park in the parish. What about other new recreation facilities or bike and walking paths? Yeah, I was excited to be at the ribbon cutting. Um, this is why we brought on uh, Michael King. So we'll go ahead and hear from him on some of the exciting things we have in recreation and what we're working on. Yeah, uh, thanks for that question. That's awesome. We have a, a lot of really good things that we're working on coming up here. Um, was out at the dog park it was great we're happy to have it uh but we are definitely looking to add you said ask specifically about uh bike and walking trails so we're we're excited to that we were able to get a grant for the mississippi river levee trail um we're going to be working on that very soon we're actually also working with capital region planning commission to a master plan for uh bike trails in the uh in the entire ascension parish area and extending and hopefully connecting to surrounding parishes so we're excited about that as well um we're also working on just major upgrades to our parks as it stands now. So working on uh, field conditions, as was talked about earlier, um, everything in terms of upgrading backstops and uh, just kind of the look of our parks and, and looking at new ways to, uh, to offer new amenities, new programming, uh, a lot of more health and wellness activities, some more passive recreation for you to do out in the parks. And then um, work, working a little bit more on uh, as we were talking earlier with green infrastructure and drainage projects and kind of working across uh, departments to, to kind of offer a few more things wherever we can. But we're very excited about a lot of the projects we have coming up. 
That's awesome. Speaking of development, we have a question in the queue from Anora. Perryville is an unincorporated community with the highest growth rate in the region. How can we be a real community and have control over our community's development or not without the powers of being incorporated? Yeah, this was um, something that was looked at um, several years ago. And um, that's a good question. And I think the best path forward um, is to get in touch with your council members and tell them what changes and what avenues you want to go and what regulations you want change and then get support of other residents to uh, support those ideas. Um, one of the issues with incorporation of Prairieville is you have to have a sheriff's department you have to have a lot of different resources that are simply not available. And so it's just more than just incorporating and taking control of your regulations and ordinances. It requires creating departments and governmental structure, um, as well as a sufficient tax base in order to uh, run the whole thing. So it was looked at, but I think that due to tax concerns and the way it would be set up and what's required to become incorporated wasn't feasible. So the other option would be to start floating ideas on what changes you want to see in Prairieville. And that's what this is about. This is a listening tour. This is about you telling us what you want. What are those ordinances that you want changed in Prairieville? What do you want Prairieville to be? This is your opportunity to let us know as elected officials what you want. Um, and, and so... Yeah, I can't. I can't touch base on the incorporation much, much more than that. But yeah, th this is this is where we want to know what you want Prairieville to look like in the future, because this is our opportunity to change those codes and ordinances. So I do appreciate the questions, is, and we need your input. We need you to take part in the direction we're moving in a city parish government. All right. Thank you so much, Nora. Tommy from Galvez is asking, what is the fastest way to get a drainage ditch cut? So we've had issues of it being so wet. Um, first, we had record number of storms in uh, 2020. And in 2021, we had a record number of rain. Um, m the most rain we've ever had since we've been keeping records. Now, that sounds like excuses. I guess it could be. But it's hard to get off road and rut up people's property, cut the grass. It's just difficult. And um, I think we're choosing to do two things that I would hope will alleviate those issues uh, in the future. And then I want to touch base on the fastest way to do it. Um, one is we're going to keep our vegetation from doing sandbags. Uh, with the record number of storms and, and the, the weather we had in the last two years, we had our vegetation doing sandbags because that's the only ones that we had that could, could do them at that part. We're looking at other resources to do our sandbags, um, to have those pre-filled sandbags for our residents. So no, our vegetation will no longer be doing that at all. They will be strictly just waiting to cut grass. Um, when it's too wet, we're going to focus on road. And we're going to a four-quadrant system that we used to use in the past. That's going to get our vegetation crews used to what they cut on a yearly basis. They get to know their routes. They get to know their channels. They get to know their obstacles. And that should improve overall vegetation. Um, I can tell you this. It is very important to me that we see a drastic improvement to ditch cutting in 2022. It will be a priority for me. And so I expect to see a drastic improvement. Now, the quickest way to do it is to call our call center at 450-1200. That number again, 450-1200, put in a work order. That way it's tracked, you have that number, and um, you can look at when that, at what stage that work order is in, and that is, that is the quickest way to have it done. So um, excited for you to use the call center and, and let's get that, that channel or ditch cut. All right, just a reminder, if you would like to participate in a way that residents have been currently doing, press star three, and you have the opportunity to have your questions submitted into the queue for 
Parish President Clint Quintmall to answer directly to you. We're going to move forward to Jonathan from Gonzales asking what is being done to help relieve traffic. So, um, two things. The most important thing is, is to manage growth. We have a very meager budget in transportation. It's about eight to ten million, depending upon the year, uh, in transportation. We have thousands of roads and countless miles to maintain. And um, it's just going to take time to do those projects. As I mentioned before, we're $1.25 billion behind. So how do we speed that process up? We focus on grants. We focus on expanding that 8 to 10 to as much as we possibly can through grants, uh, through state spending, through federal spending. Um, I think we have gotten very aggressive of late, and certainly in my in the last two years since I've been in office going after grants. Uh, unfortunately, these things don't happen overnight, but we have been very aggressive, and I'm hoping to see safety widenings, uh, additional uh, overlays, and major transportation projects. Um, imagine if we can improve and have another interchange, taking traffic off of 73 and off Highway 30. Well, I mean, what does that mean for our residents and getting to work and getting home? Major improvements. As these roundabouts start coming online that we've been working for for years and years, um, that's going to improve our, our, our traffic. But again, we need to stay aggressive, keep getting aggressive with every grant possibility out there, and um, that's our goal, um, managing growth. I mean, how, how, when you keep adding subdivisions or apartments, what are you doing to compensate for the amount of, take a, take a 200 home subdivision, two cars per home, average, 400 more cars in that area. What changes have we made to compensate for that? Now, add two or three of those subdivisions. Now you got 1,200 cars. What have you done? Have you chosen to grow with your infrastructure, or have you chosen to grow beyond your infrastructure? And I think those are the hard questions we're asking now and need to be asked, because we don't want to grow so much that we become gridlocked, because we certainly don't have the funds to keep up. So we need to grow better. We need to grow more responsibly while we're doing these infrastructure projects, while we're being aggressive and going seek grant money and funding. So it's, it's that two part. It's being aggressive on funding and projects, making sure those projects get done as quickly as possible. Utility re relocation is a huge issue for us due to a lack of planning over the past three decades. If we were to plan those utility corridors, we wouldn't have to be paying major money and having the time delays and moving those utilities, but we didn't. And again, there's no time machine that's available to me to go back and fix it. We have to start today so that in 20 years from now, those benefits become reality. And, and that's, that's, that's what we're working on. But it's gonna, it's, gonna be, it's gonna take those two things, being aggressive with funding, making sure projects happen, and grow more responsibly. All right, thank you, Parish President. I want to remind you guys, if you want your question submitted with the chance to being answered, and you're joining us live on any of these platforms, dial 833-946-1533 and press star 3 to be entered into the queue for a chance to have your question answered. Right now, we're going to take a question from Sarah from online. What is being done about the tires left around the roads on the West Bank? They're an eyesore. Yeah, so I'm gonna uh, pass this on to Regina. And I know we got some programs uh, in place, but Regina, if you wanna touch on base on the uh, tires and, and what we're doing to help uh, pick those up. Thank you, Parish President. We currently have a crew out that's going around with the trailer picking up the tires. We have our tire center partially open where the residents can bring the tires to us. But for now, we're going out picking the tires up outside the road. We've gotten with the engineers to work on our recycling center. 
So that way we will be able to open a recycling center and the residents will be able to bring the tires and drop them off at, the, at West Ascension Drainage, Department of Public Works. Yeah, and I just want to add to that, you know, um, it is an issue. We get calls about it. Our crews are doing the best they can to keep up. Um, I think we got a couple bad actors <laughs> that uh, contribute to this issue. Uh, we, we're going we're gonna to work with other agencies to try to combat that. And, um, and you know, we could use a, a resident's help, but we're going to do everything we can to clean up uh, the tire situation on the West Bank. All right, Samantha from Prairieville asking, how many parish employees are there? Well, I'm going to pass that on to our CFO. He should have that accurate number. Uh, thank you, Mr. Parish President. Actually, uh, it just so happens we were doing some staffing analysis this week, and we currently have 434 filled positions in the parish uh, that are under the direct control of the parish president. Uh, we have about 500 budgeted, so we do have some positions that are vacant. And so I think between now and the end of the year, uh, you're going to see some recruitment efforts. So I'm going to plug our website. Please go to our website, look for any job opportunities. Uh, I think between now and January 1st, you might be seeing some vegetation, some drainage. We may even have a career fair. Uh, we want to make sure that we reach out to, to everybody and, and try to fill positions that we, we need to get the, the work done. Uh, in addition to those that are under the direct control of the parish president, we have about another 187 that are in the budget. Those are for entities like fire departments, for the sheriff. So we're looking at about 700 uh, positions that are in the budget and then HR because they do a lot of work for the parish employees there's a number of other employees that are either volunteer fire to firefighters uh, they may be uh, sports officials there's about 850 total people that they do work for uh, and, and HR so uh, total about 850 with uh, almost 500 of those being under the control of the parish president yeah I, I don't think that um people un understand you know it's a large number I mean, why do you have 450 something people that's, that's that's a huge number um we're a large corporation we have a 130 roughly million dollar budget um and, and that that's a lot of different departments that's that's finance that's recreation that's a drainage department east and west bank that's an hr that's mental health that's that's jail that's maintenance on, on all our facilities uh parish government has to take care of all the buildings we own them so we, we have to maintain this courthouse we're sitting in today is, is our responsibility and so it requires a lot of employees um our overlay crews um you know the ones that that we have uh subgroups or or, or boat crews that go out and clean our channels um, this is a massive organization uh, there's no doubt about it, and um, and you got to have superstars at the top. And I, I think we're we're well on our way, putting the right people in the right places, to ensure that we're maximizing uh, our opportunities here in Ascension Parish. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to go to Daryl from online. Daryl says, "I saw another plant approved. What are the plants doing for us in return for their credits?" It's a great question. Um, so, yeah, you, you saw the uh, $4.5 billion uh, air products plant, uh, the carbon, uh, carbon capturing. Um, we got a lot of different expansions going on in our plant system. So, um, I, I remember my dad telling me when he lived in Baton Rouge, what was Gonzales? You know, what was Gonzales when he was in the, well, it was, the only time you had real money in Gonzales is when the strawberry crop came in. That's when you had any real currency here. So, um, you know, we, we saw our first plants come in in the, in, in the 60s and 70s um, and grow from there. Um, provide $100,000 jobs. Those families that rely on that get to spend their money locally. They go out to eat. They go out and buy things locally. They contribute to uh, softball and, and, and baseball games and football. And um, we're, we're the richest parish in the state per capita income. I want you to think, think about that, how blessed we are here. And so we, we begin to think, okay, well, what, what is our, our budget? 
How is it affected by the plans? Over 60 percent comes from tax revenues from the plants. That's not, you know, and you think about all the sub-businesses supporting those plants. And you, and you think about those, those companies and who they employ. I, when, you, when you ask anyone in this parish if they know someone who works at the plant, a friend, a family member, the answer is yes. And, and a, it, it adds a tremendous amount to our economy here. And uh, we're blessed. Uh, Obviously, we, we have to ensure that we're growing uh, along the river responsibly, and uh, I think we're doing that. We speak to managers, um, but um, we are the richest parish per capita income per resident uh, in the state. And, um, and our school systems, our teachers that are employed here, our whole school board budget, if you took the plant system out of that, I, I would, I would, it would be a scary reality of what our school system would look like on how deficient it would be in educating our children. And we all know our, our children are our future. So what happens to that education system? Sheriff's Department, how much does it rely on, on that tax base? A tremendous amount. How many officers are you willing to take off the streets? Because that's what you're talking about when you're talking about how are they contributing. Well, they're putting more officers on the street, more cars, more patrols. So, yes, we want to grow responsibly, but the plants offer us a tremendous amount of flexibility here in Ascension Parish. Um, and um, it's important we work with them. Thanks. All right, thank you so much, Daryl, for submitting that question. I hope that uh, you got the answer that you needed, and thank you so much for participating. Before we move forward, I want to remind you, if you want your question answered like Daryl, and you are watching on any of our live platforms, dial 833-946-1533 and press star 3 to have your question submitted. Now, before we go to the next question, we will now take our second polling question. I will first read the question aloud and review the possible answers. Then I will repeat the question so you can select your desired answer. Poll question number two. Thinking now about the quality of life in the parish of, parish of Ascension, how would you say it has progressed, if any, in the last four years? The four possible answers are gotten better, stayed the same, gotten worse, or you're undecided. Again, thinking now about the quality of life in the parish of Ascension, how would you say it has progressed, if any, in the last four years? Press 1 to select gotten better. Press 2 to select stayed the same. Press 3 to select gotten worse. And press 4 to select undecided. The question again, thinking now about the quality of life in the parish of Ascension, how would you say it has progressed, if any, in the last four years? I'll read the answers one more time. Press 1 to select gotten better. Press 2 to select stayed the same. Press 3 to select gotten worse, and press 4 to select undecided. We have another question now online from Chantel. Donisonville is smaller than other parts of the parish, but is there something the parish can do to inform our citizens in this area about more of the initiatives underway? Can we have more listening tour meetings in our area. Yeah, absolutely. We plan on doing this annually. Um, this is this is important for me just to hear from you and talk about those those uh, what that progress we're making. And it's important to hear from you on how that progress affects you. And so, yeah, we're we're looking forward to that. Um, we ha we had our open meetings there uh, on the West Bank. We had. Um, or sewer meetings there, uh, listening to concerns. I was able to talk to several residents that came to those public meetings and those open meetings. Um, so yeah, listen, 
It's equally important to attend a, a council meeting on the west side. That's your public meetings. So we encourage you to come along and, and voice and, and talk about, you know, the things that you want to see on the West Bank and, and, we, and, and listen to some of the things that we're, we're working on there. Um, but, yeah, we, these things take time. Um, when you're talking about bringing more jobs or, um, or greater things to a, a community, um, it's, a lot, it's, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of time, and, a, and it's a lot of commitment. But, what, but the great thing is we're seeing that. And we're not only seeing it from parish government and our council members, but we're seeing it from the sheriff's department. We're seeing it from the school board. We're seeing it from the library board. And that's the great thing. That, that, because when we all come together is when we really succeed. So I encourage the, the citizens of the West Bank, please come to, come to a council meeting on the West Bank. Those are your meetings. And, and talk to your elected officials. Talk to me. Uh, express your concerns, and uh, just a great opportunity to meet you one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you, Chantel. I hope that answered your question. We have another question from Amanda from Sorrento. How do we get our waterways clear? They were bad before the hurricane, and they're even worse now. Yeah, so um, our waterways, I'm assuming we're talking about major channels. So in January... January, February, the, the first quarter of 2020 when I took office, I uh, established a boat crew. And um, their, their goal was to go ahead and start uh, ensuring that our major channels were open um, at each of our structures. I probably do a poor job of showing their successes, and I need to do better, and I need to do better, me. Because a lot of these projects are not in public view. You don't get to see the work they're doing on a channel back in a wooded track that's got a critical blockage that they're opening up so that you don't flood. You don't get to see that. Now, with Ida, it set us back. But we got federal funding to go in and get us back to zero and then get us back to our regular maintenance of our major channels. Um, we're investing in equipment to do that, uh, shredders, grapple uh, attachments for our, our uh, excavators. Um, we're getting better and better at our maintenance. Uh, we've got a long way to go. There's no doubt about it. And maintenance is critical for me. It's critical. But I also need to show you what we're doing and what we're accomplishing and what you're not seeing. That's on me. And I've got to do better because our crews are getting it done. They're working hard. I've got to do a better job of showing you what they're doing, and I'm going to do that. And we're going to start at our drainage meetings making those presentations about what we got done during that month, including weekly updates on Facebook. So we're going to do a better job of showing what we're getting accomplished and because it's important for me to show you how hard our crews are working for you and what they're getting accomplished. So stay tuned. We're, we're about to blast that out. Okay, thank you so much for answering that question. We have another question from Dana from Galvez. What is being done to help with flooding issues in our parish? So several things. Um, I'm going to let uh, uh, Ron Savoy touch base uh, on some of our major projects, as well as Regina on the West Bank, on what, what we're doing, um, especially with Hurricane Ida, as well as our big projects. But um, two things. One, we're going after projects. We had our first major dredging project in a long time on New River, the first portion. We're about to start. Start part two, fish and frog, those, those 212 by lock, locks are about to be put in. Uh, we're about to start construction on Lower Ridge Levee Extension. Um, in addition to that, we do our work order system, cleaning out debris and going on when they call 450-1200, and they put that work order in. Uh, we have crews that go out and clean culverts. Um, it's a relatively small crew. They are tens of thousands of culverts for us to clean. But we do have a crew that's dedicated to doing that every day. Uh, they try to pick up trash at the same time. But they're making sure that that water gets from the house, away from the house, into the ditch, into the minor drainage, into the major drainage, and out of our parish. That is the goal. And that is the more maintenance we do, the easier it gets for us to put into that maintenance plan. But we're developing that. But I do want to let Ron touch base on all the things that we're working on here in the East Bank and then pass it on to Regina to talk a little bit about the West Bank projects. 
Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, as echoing some of what he said, um, you know, we also talked about the number of staff and employees that we have within the parish um, in layers in government. So I'm over the vegetation management group and the drainage department. And a lot of times at the flip of a switch, we need to be ready to man the infrastructure of the parish. Um, so we have the three pumping stations, Marvin Bro, Henderson Bayou and Sorrento pumping station and the floodgate in uh, Frog Bayou and Bluff Swamp. And so at any given time in any event that the parish faces, our number one priority is having that infrastructure on ready uh, for the residents. So uh, we do a great job at that and I wanna definitely give kudos to the staff for that. Um, in addition to that, the capital projects uh, that we've gotten is getting really aggressive with regional approach to uh, projects. And so with that, we've secured funding, federal funding for, uh, as earlier mentioned, Highway 22 and value of around $45 million in partnership with the uh, Pontchartrain Levy District. And so we've secured that grant and that'll be moving forward. And uh, the Marvin Bro pump station and levy protection system. So we hear about the Laurel Ridge levy extension that's been on the books for years. Uh, it's set to start construction in early 2022. In addition to that, we've received federal funding in the value of 57 million um, from the mitigation funds from the 2016 flood. That will be brought to fruition and going out for RFQ in 2022 and uh, we'll enhance all the levees and bring them to a standard uh, that will protect much more uh, backwater flooding in areas of Sorrento, AC Santamal, Preville, Galvez, and then that will tie into another capital project uh, for the Sorrento and southern end of the parish uh, with the storm surge protection project for the Bayou Conway and Panama watershed. And so we've got us a uh, a secured funding source with Pontrain Levy District and the East Ascension Drainage District uh, moving forward in partnership to seek funding for that project, which would then give the southern part of the parish a, a pumping system uh, for flood control there. So uh, we are aggressively seeking funding uh, in all areas of flood protection. And as he mentioned earlier, the west part of the parish, northwestern end, uh, the Fish Bayou project is under construction and uh, is moving forward to help out the Bluff Swamp and the western end of the parish. Um, in addition to all of these projects that we mentioned, um, we've also moved forward with the drainage district and the council with the floodplain management plan. They are modeling all of our infrastructure and waterways for our drainage, which is going to produce data that will then show our existing condition of all of our waterways and tell us what the best uh, valuable projects will be to help us multi-budget for the next 5, 10, 20 years out for our drainage projects and tell us where we need to go for as a uh, drainage plan as far as future capital projects. And the maintenance of day-to-day of -day operations, as the President said, is, is mainly stemmed from the work order system and uh, call that 450-1200 number if you have a drainage problem or concern, and our group will certainly address it and try to take uh, your situation under consideration. So that's a quick overview of everything that we've got going on, and thank you for the opportunity to answer. Over on the west bank, we're currently cleaning out the culverts and checking the the road ditches, the drainage ditches, the off-road ditches, removing trees that fell from Hurricane Ida. We have, the, we're currently digging on the Irish Canal, cleaning out the Irish Canal. We have a shredder here where we're gonna go in and do some clean up, shredding up trees in that area. We have back trucks that come through to pump out, to blow out the culverts, anything that's stopped up with the drainage. We have an issue with um, beaver dams we're locating and removing beaver dams currently to open up the drainage in the Modest, Aben, and Lemonville area. We went through and we're gonna start doing it on an annual, cleaning out the road ditches and off-road ditches up with it and just to make sure that we don't leave out none of the road drainage ditches, off-road ditches being cleaned out. 
Okay, and I do want to touch base on um, a, a couple other things that we, we, we didn't mention. Um, their future projects uh, as well as um, the floodplain management and what that's going to do for us. So when you look at um, Man Shack and what took place back in May in the Spanish Lake and Bluff Swamp, not being able to get the water into Man Shack, get it to the Amy River. So we've got a tremendous amount of work going on in Man Shack now. Now, does that only help Spanish Lake and Bluff? No, it does not. It uh, Welsh Gully, uh, Cotton Bayou, Muddy Creek. That's going to improve all of those trainer structures flowing in the Man Shack to get to Amy River, reducing flooding problems in the northern part of our parish. And uh, we've been very aggressive in Man Shack of lately, and we're going to continue to be until we have that thing flowing as, as well as possible. We're looking at further... Uh, money through the Louisiana Watershed Initiative, channelization and some dredging in areas of, of uh, Manchac, and that should help um, relieve that water. Um, in addition to that, also with the Louisiana wa uh, Watershed Initiative, working with our neighboring parishes, the EBR, Iberville, um, we're looking at three pumping stations in the, in the future. We're working on those concepts now. Um, one would be in uh, St. Gabriel to help with uh, Bayou Fountain, and in that area, uh, reducing that water, going into the Mississippi River, not having to go into Manchac. Um, Iberville would be at Willow Glen, modifying that facility to pump into the Mississippi River, therefore reducing that water from Iberville going into Manchac. That would also help Ascension and EBR. Um, we're also looking at our own internal project, uh, which is a five parish benefit project on the Highway 74 uh, diversion and um, New River Pumping Station in the Marvin Bro Basin. So what that does is um, when the Spanish Lake Basin gets too high, we would able, and that's above elevation 7, um, getting closer to flood stage, um, a lot of the older homes, uh, very, very old, would be at, at elevation 10. Uh, some of the newer homes would be at 11, and even the most recent ones would be closer to 12. Um, so, but elevation 7 is when we'd initiate pull down before we even get to those critical levels. And we would divert that water into New River, and then we would pump it into the Mississippi River with a pumping station at um, New River. Now, this would only be done when New River would be able to accept that water so that we would not have any jeopardy of our residents in Dutchtown, Geismar, Gonzales, or Santa Mo. Okay, we wouldn't, we wouldn't operate until we know that safe conditions can exist for us to go ahead and divert that water. With that being said, when, that's, when we're not diverting water from Spanish Lake, the New River pumping station would allow us to pull water from Geismar, Dutchtown, and the western side of Gonzales, and pump it into the Mississippi River. What that does is, it doesn't put any water in Riverville, it doesn't put any water in, in EBR, it doesn't put any water in Livingston, and it doesn't put any water in St. James. And, of course, we benefit internally. It is a five-parish regional benefit. Huge. I would say monumental in scope. Also, our Sorrento Surge Protection Project. We all know about the West Shore Project where Ascension and St. James got left out of the West Shore Project. Well, we've been working on funding to ensure that we have that protection on our southern uh, edge and working with St. James to ensure that our levee systems connect and we have added protection for both our residents in St. James and Ascension. So we're looking at a two pumping station uh, or at least a, a increase or um, upgrade in the Sorrento pumping station and a new pumping station at the Panama Canal with a levee system to provide surf protection on the southern part of our parish. When you do that, further down the wrong road, a long time from now, you could put a um, pumping station at the end of Conway to pump into the Mississippi River. That would be decades off now, so that's not in reality. But this Sorrento surf protection project is currently reality and we're looking to get started on that as soon as possible starting up uh, tying into the Marvin Bro uh, levy system and um, uh, working uh, close with St. James to ensure that we're all getting the added protection that we deserve on our southern and uh, eastern part of our parish so those two projects I would honor to say if we can have both those done that's even as monumental as the Marvin Bro pumping station and levee system. That's how big it is. To be able to have a gravity system on the southern and northern parish controlled under pumps, to avoid having surge protection issues, 
to be able to pump down for storms, to be able to put that water in the Mississippi River where it has a five parish benefit is monumental in scope. We all know that this has been looked at in the past, and what have we heard? It's not, not able. It's not feasible. What well, is? It's possible, and we're looking at doing it. And um, we're going to aggressively... Uh, we're going to aggressively go after that project, and we're going to do everything we can to ensure it gets done. Um, so the floodplain management. And listen, it's hard to get up here and tell you everything that we got going on in drainage because there is so much. But our floodplain management is looking at 2D modeling of our entire parish. What that means is that we can get a visual representation of every inch of water and, and then of rainfall and then every foot of data that we can use to help us grow responsively. In addition to that, they're modeling all of our major channels. They're going to let us know where our weaknesses are, where we need to expand those channels to push more water in each Manshack, Henderson, Spanish Lake Basin, Marvin Bro, Conway, Panama. Just ride around and look at how many canals we have to maintain. How many structures in those canals, in a single canal, how many bridges, how many culverts, culverts that are failing, that now we had no idea when we were putting these things in for the past three decades that all of a sudden they would start faltering and, and eroding. Now we've got to go replace all those. And now we've changed our ordinances to where you can only put in uh, corrugated aluminum or PVC. So we've made those adjustments, but we still got to go fix all those problems that have occurred over decades. It takes time, it takes personnel, it takes money, and um, I, I don't I don't think we do a good enough job in showing those successes to our residents. But that's going to change because we're going to make I'm going to make that a priority, and we're going to show you what we're getting done on a monthly, not an annual. I don't need to do an annual because we get so much done in a month, just a month will shock you. So we're going to do a monthly report at our drainage meeting of how much we're getting done so that our residents can know we're working hard for you and we're going to tackle this thing and we're going to get better and better at it. All right, thank you so much for the details on how we're evolving as a parish. We are getting near the end of our live event here, so if you want to get those questions in, it may not be able to be answered, but go ahead and get it in anyway. We want to see what you think, and we do have an online forum where we can get that to you outside of this event. Um, if you're watching on any of our platforms, be it Ascension 21, Facebook, or even AscensionListens.com, you want to go ahead on and call 833-946-1533. To submit your question, you just press star three, and we'll do our best to get that question answered. Now, before we go through with any more questions, we're going to take a look at the answers to our second polling question. That question was, would you say that over the past four years, the quality of life in the parish of Ascension has gotten better, stayed the same, or gotten worse? Due to the participants that we have online, this is what you guys think. 21% say it's gotten better. 29% say it stayed the same. 29% also say it's gotten worse, and 21% of the residents of Ascension Parish are undecided. 
Parish President, do you want to touch on the results of this poll briefly so that we can get to our last couple of questions? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that feedback is very important. Um, obviously, when you look at the first poll, what was the most important? Traffic and drainage. What has contributed to those issues? Growth. So we got to focus on responsible growth, where we, where we grow with our infrastructure and not outgrow our infrastructure, because that's where the two problems now. Three to four. Recreation. Hello, this is the event for the Ascension Parish. Event. Uh, please stay on the line. If you have a question, please press star three. Hello, this is the event for Ascension Parish. Please stay on the line and press star three Two if you'd like to ask the number one issue. And there's others. We're aware of them. We're working on them. But we need to continue to have these conversations with you so that we can grow this and have that 29% that shrink some. Thanks. All right, we're going to take it back to our online questions. We have a question from Bridget. Thanks for the online system for reporting power outages and debris. Will this always be used? I don't remember seeing this before. No, this was brand, brand new. Um, we're excited. That's, that's, that's coming out of our IT department. Uh, Brian Martinez is one of our superstars. Um, he developed that system for us. Um, you know, that's going to be something we use uh, and improve on. It's the first time, and it was very helpful. Our feedback from our residents, including uh, this, this caller here, um, has been positive. So we're going to continue with that, um, and we're going to continue to build. Also, in our post-storm review, we looked at how we, not only how we handled the storm, but how utility companies handled. How was, how was that communication with them? What can we do to improve our utility infrastructure? How, how we handled um, health concerns, how we can get better at that. How do we utilize all our facilities in this emergency situation? So we go post them and we analyze all that, and we look to make changes for the next storm in the next year, the next hurricane season, so we get better and better on how we handle these things. And, and that's the ultimate goal. And we always are trying to step back and take a look at how we're doing and, and be critical of ourselves so that we're always approving and we're always getting better. And, and that's the ultimate goal. So super excited you enjoyed the service. 
and you can plan on seeing it in the future. Thanks. All right, Bridget, thank you so much for submitting that question. We're going to now go to Veronica. Does the parish have any boat launches? And what about for... Yeah, this is part of the recreation. Um, this was part of several proposals. So I will turn it over to our recreation gurus over here. Um, but I will tell you that, uh, you know, we do have some launches. Um, Fred's being one that we took over from DOTD after they've made the improvements there. Um, I wouldn't suggest launching a kayak at Fred's. Um, but that is one of our parish launches. And uh, as far as the kayaking and things of that nature, I'll pass it on to our recreation director. Yeah, so we do have uh, that launch as well as the one uh, we have PJ's Landing and Laurel Ridge. Uh, again, similarly, they may not be the best areas to launch kayaks, although you could from there. Uh, we are looking at feasibility of adding new kayaks to some of our current park locations that back up to waterways. And we're also looking at uh, trying to develop a plan on what waterways are navigable, particularly by kayak, canoe, things of that nature, so that we can put together more of a blue way system and maybe connect into some of our, uh, our major waterways. But we are looking into that now and adding some kayak launches. I believe we've budgeted for a few of them over the next two years to, to go ahead and start adding some of those in. Yeah, I want to add to that a little bit. So what we're doing also is part of our drainage program is looking at projects that we can do large retention ponds. And when I mean a pond, I mean a lake. I mean something massive to where it not only serves a recreational purpose such as kayaking, but also serves a drainage purpose. And so we're, we took a trip, um, uh, or some of our, um, our drainage board members arranged a trip for us to go to Harris County, and we learned a lot about some of those projects that they had recreation slash drainage, and it benefited both. And so we're looking at uh, that here in Ascension, and um, we're pursuing funding for those opportunities. So, uh, yeah, hopefully um, we're able to grab one of those projects and have a lake-type drainage slash recreation where you can go and kayak in a lake and it's also utilized for drainage as well so that's something to look forward to and uh, we're going to aggressively uh, look at those options that's it all right veronica i hope that answers your questions thank you so much for participating we're going to go now to dennis online who says will you do live events where we can ask our questions in person yeah we had some we we had several um um santa mom jim um uh, Dutchtown uh, Elementary Gym, uh, Central Middle Gym, uh, West Bank, uh, we have one there. Um, so we've done several, but yes, we're going to do these annually. That's important to hear from you. That's, that's one of my uh, major uh, campaigns is open communication with our public. So yeah, look forward. To pay attention, we'll, we'll be posting. Another. Hope to see you there. This journey with us. We're going to take our last question from James online. Are there any programs for kids for arts, music, or dance? If not, not why not? Okay, I'm going to put this over to uh, our director, Michael King. Um, something we're, we're working on, huh, Michael? Yeah, it's definitely something that we're working on. Uh, in fact, I guess earlier at the very beginning of this year we uh we actually took a survey of of uh, what kind of programs y'all are interested in and those were among the top uh basically a lot of stuff that's not sports right so uh recreation isn't just sports and i've kind of been trying to preach that and
Hello, this is the event for Ascension Parish in Louisiana. Please stay on the line and we will be, we'll, we will be back shortly. If you have a question, please press star three. Thank you. really appreciate you taking your time to join us this evening for the listening tour. This was hopefully a productive way to interact with parish leadership. If you have any questions that did not get addressed, those questions on our website, ascensionlistens.com, and someone will follow up with you. Thank you so much again for participating. I'm going to pass it to Parish President Clint Quintmaw for any closing words and remarks for our first virtual and live Ascension Listens tour. Yeah, I'm super excited um, about this opportunity to reach people who can't make the in-person meetings. Um, obviously, with COVID, it was a challenge. Uh, matter of fact, I had to miss one because I got COVID and I tested at the door and the scanner went off. So uh, I had to leave and uh, my CAO, John Diaz, took over for me. So, um, you know, we look forward to hearing from you. This is critical. It's critical that we hear from you to know we are your representatives and that feeds through me down to my administration so it is critical that we hear from you with these type of events also want to encourage you to come to council meetings and come to board meetings and and recreation committee meetings and other meetings to get involved and talk about the things that you want in your community in your parish and uh, excited to hear from you that feedback is critical for us it drives us at work every day and um, often allows us to take a look at where we're at what we're doing and where we're headed so we appreciate that feedback from you we thank you and uh, we continue looking forward to serve you night we just want to let you know again that we are so grateful. If you have any extra questions, we do have ascensionlistens.com. That forum is always up where you can submit your comments. They will get to Parish President. We are not ignoring you. So submit your questions online throughout the year. Again, we want to practice transparency and being able to bridge the gap from our government to you, the residents. Thank you so much for participating with us, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.